Hello, and today I'm going to be doing my review of Linux Mint 11 Capture, and I'm using the GNOME 64-bit edition. First thing you can notice is the first time you boot it up after you've installed it, it will come up like this. Welcome to the Linux Mint Release 11 Capture Edition GNOME 64-bit. Welcome, thank you for choosing Linux Mint. We'll hope you enjoy it as much as we did designing it. The links below will help you to get started with your new operating system. Have a great time, and do not hesitate to send us your feedback. Then it will give you documentation, support, project doc and community and yeah it will open a hyperlink somewhere on the website i.e. the forum chat room or the tutorial area um, these will usually open a file like a pdf for instance down here just to show you what you're doing and get on with it uh, you can choose to show this at, to start up or not to show this to start up leaving it blank will prevent it from showing at start up Ticking it will show it start up. I'm just going to leave it showing it start up. Um, this is an installed version on the hard disk just to show you Mint running at its optimal speed on the 64 bit. Um, this is based off of Ubuntu, so anything that you would do in Ubuntu is compatible with Mint. So anything you want to install, so if you install a package in Ubuntu, you can install that package in Mint. The repositories for Ubuntu will work, everything like that. Um, yeah, so this is basically a fresh install, apart from the fact that I have done all the updates and put in one or two compiz effects. Actually, just the one, which is if I just show you now, go into the home folder, wobbly windows, wobbly windows. Did you see that? Right. The categories I'm going to be using to judge it are aesthetics or looks, compatibility, user friendliness or ease of use, bugs, graphics and sounds, uh, are there any bugs in the startup? Software, speed, my overall rating out of 10 and reasons for this. Uh, what do I look forward to seeing in further releases and why? What am I happy with? What am I disappointed in? What would I like to see improved in the distribution in the next few releases? And as I said before, keep in mind that this is a hard disk installed, proper installed version of it. So this is as fast as a 64 bit version of Linux Mint should be able to run using fairly new hardware. So First thing, obviously it's based on Ubuntu, so it's going to be pretty similar. You notice that there's no GNOME 2 panel up here, and there's no Unity dock here. Although you can install the Unity dock, but you've got your custom GNOME 2 version, as it were, in Linux Mint. So you're going to notice you've got Software Manager, all the important stuff here, logging out, shutting down, common places, applications down here. You know, in all favourites, you can search here. So let's say you wanted to search for compis. And then just give it a moment because screen recording does lag it out quite a bit. Yeah, so you get the compis settings manager here. You can enable anything you want in Mint from what I've seen. There's no bugs with compis, unlike in Ubuntu, there are a lot of bugs with compis. But you know what they say, never get the first generation, so we'll see what it's like in 11.10. But that's Ubuntu, well it has got something to do with Mint, but nevertheless, let's get off that. So, you've already got a great package here, you can get anything you want from Ubuntu and install it on Mint. And, you've got a nice little custom shell of GNOME down here. You can change desktop background. So you've got the backgrounds, all of these. That's the one, uh, not that. Uh, you can change the theme. I just put this up. You get Aurora Mint, Carve and Cassandra, Facilia Lightning, Mint X, Mint X Metal, Peppermint, Sheiky Wise, and World Mint. My favourites are Mint X Metal, Lightning, and Carbon. But I keep it on Mint X Metal because that's the default you come with. Yeah. Desktop environment, as I said, is a GNOME 2, although. It's customised and you can install Unity and GNOME 3 as well. Um, the compatibility, as, as I've said, this is an Ubuntu based version of Linux Mint. I'm not using the roll and release Debian testing version. This Ubuntu based version has all the compatibility that Ubuntu has. And Ubuntu's got the most compatibility out of any Linux operating system really. So. It stays in good stead. This has the exact same compatibility as Ubuntu, which is tons of it basically. 
So as I said before, in my Fedora versus Ubuntu comparison review type thing, support for older hardware in Mint and Ubuntu are good. Newer hardware, very good. You can do webcams, microphones, printers, sound systems and speakers, it's all good. Flash works, Java works, wireless cards work, graphics and sound work. So it's backwards compatible with a lot of things and you can use maybe a Windows printer over Samba, something I've used before on both. Um, yeah, user friendliness, ease of use, being an Ubuntu based system, very user friendly. Menu, just like Windows, Windows 7 and Vista that is, you can type in what you want to see here, so you can search Google, Wikipedia, look it up in the dictionary, search the computer, you can look for a program like, I don't know, Zero. You can go into all the different categories like all accessories, graphics, internet, office, sound and video, administration, preferences, favourites. These are just the default favourites that come with it. You can always go back to all applications and all, anytime. This will just minimise anything that you have open, so if I just quickly open this. Yeah. Uh, also, the workspace switcher, workspace switcher sorry, you have to add that to the panel by going add to panel and when it comes up, installing the workspace switcher onto it and the waste basket as well, you have to add that to it. And I've just sorted that out myself, so that's custom as it were. Um, you can install software using software manager and the package manager. Just wait for this to load. As I said before, screen capture does make it lag. See? Yeah. Um, where should we go? Um, office. Right, we'll go office. And then I'll just type in Libre Office just to show you that. Already comes with it, but you know. Libre. Like the first one that came up was just this open office all finished library. But say it's pretty similar to Ubuntu. Um yeah, so being an Ubuntu based system, a lot of the stuff is similar to Ubuntu. In Ubuntu when you drag across the desktop like this, it comes up in orange, it comes up in green on mint. Which is different. Bugs, I haven't really noticed any bugs at the moment. Apart from one that the sound system didn't always initialize and start up, but it's only happened once and the live disc was a bit dodgy. I had to actually drag over the whole desktop to make it appear in the live CD, which was weird. Graphics and sound, you can get proprietary or open source drivers, both good, same as Ubuntu, again. I haven't seen any bugs on startup. I've used both the Linux Mint custom grub bootloader and the Ubuntu custom grub bootloader and neither have any bugs on them. Software, there's a lot of software available for it, exact same as Ubuntu, there's tons of it. Software good quality, same as Ubuntu, yeah. Package manager, software manager is really good. Um, also here, as I said, both of these two. This is another package manager. This is good as well. This is Synaptic. Um, yeah. Does Deb. You can use Alien to get RPM, same as Ubuntu. Architectures, you got 64 bit and 32 bit. This is currently 64 bit. Speed, great speed, even when screen recording. It's decent, even though screen recording does make it lag substantially. Start at speed, quick. As soon as it's done, 5 10 seconds at most. Once you've selected Linux Mint, or if you boot straight up, 10-15 seconds as I said most. Um, everyday tasks, fast, as in Ubuntu. I never see really bad lag. I've only had this installed for about 48 hours, but I've used it before on other computers. Speed doing multitasks. You can have a lot of windows open, like internet windows. I've done that. Works fine. I've gamed a bit on here with a few games. Yeah, it's all supported for a lot of stuff. My overall rating out of 10, this is an Ubuntu based system, so you know I love it as usual. I'm going to give it an 8.2.
think that's the same as Fedora. 8.2 out of 10. It's good. Very good. I'm liking it. It's solid. It just needs to improve its interface. Maybe have things up here or GNOME 3. I don't know. But yeah, I could improve that and then that could make it a 9 or even a 9.5 or 10. Yeah, that's the reasons for that. I'm looking forward to seeing the implementation of a new desktop environment, maybe, into Mint, so you have choice, like in Ubuntu. Actually freshly installed, so you could choose between GNOME 3 and Unity, for instance. Um, yeah. I'm not happy with, well, basically I said, the desktop environment. It is good, but maybe they can implement this custom thing into a more advanced system, like maybe GNOME 3. Um, what I'd like to see in the future, as I said, desktop environments, uh, what am I happy with, the amount of software there is, like in Ubuntu, customizability, speed, ease of use, usability, a lot of bugs have been eradicated in Mint that there are in Ubuntu, I appreciate, but Mint still has its own bugs, like especially in the live CD. As I said before, this was installed on a hard disk, so bear that in mind, 64-bit, can get a 32-bit edition. Uh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.